All right. Question number two is something like this, which has been made from the topic current electricity. There is a long, infinitely long line charge. And in fact, it has been charged with this particular density, lambda coulomb per meter. And outside, there is a cylindrical conducting shell, which is also infinitely long. Initially, there is no means of conduction between this and this. But at t equals to 0, the medium here is being filled, which has permittivity epsilon and conductivity sigma. Now, you see that moment you say that the conductivity is there, so quite obviously, the charge would start flowing and it would go radially outward, of course, in a cylindrical fashion. Now, the question demands the variation of J, which is the current density, of course, at a given point. That means you just concentrate on one location, the location is fixed. And you just have to see the variation of j at a given point with respect to time. And this is how the options are given. Now, of course, j would be changing because here it's not the case of steady current. The current is, of course, manifested in the form of discharging circuit. So look at the analogy with the RC discharging circuit. Quite obviously, you would be having current stream in this particular way. But of course, the current would not be steady. Now, at a given point, if you try to see the variation of J with time, you can directly compare with the current variation in RC discharging circuit, which would go in this way. And here it's, of course, at that particular point, you got to make a cylindrical area in order to define J. Of course, that's very immaterial because we just have to see the variation of j with respect to time. And the correct option for this is option number d. So this was question number two. Now we'll move to question number three. All right. Another very wonderful question which is framed is from the topic of heat. And here is a cooler plan which has a capacity of 120 liters of water. And this particular cooler, in fact, extracts p joule of internal energy from the water in one second. So that's what has been said as p watt. And once the water comes out from this, it is fed into a device. And that particular device generates a thermal load of 3 kilowatt. And the water would get hotter by a certain amount and that would again be circulated to this cooler. That cooler would again cool and the circulation keeps on going. The question is, the temperature of the water fed into the device can't exceed 30 degrees centigrade. That's a condition that has to be satisfied. And initial temperature at cooler is 10 degrees centigrade. The minimum value of P here so that device can be operated for three hours. Now what happens is that, see, this is the P watt capacity of this cooler. With the passage of time, the temperature of the water in the cooler keeps on increasing. And we need to see that particular value of P so that till three hours, the temperature fed, the temperature of the water, of course, should not go beyond 30 degrees centigrade. So what happens is that after each cycle, the temperature of the water increases step by step. And we just need to calculate that time so that the temperature here would not exceed 30 degrees. The question is very straightforward. It would be something like this. 3000, because it's in kilowatt, minus P multiplied by time. That's as regard to water because the 3000 or the 3 kilowatt is increasing the temperature while P is decreasing the temperature. So this is the net rise in temperature, of course. This has to be said rate of increase of internal energy into T would be the total energy. And that would be now equated to MC, which is the specific heat capacity of water, delta T. Delta T, of course, would be 20 degree because initial temperature was 10 and it should not exceed 
30 degrees. So the final temperature would be plugged as 30 degrees. On solving that, we would be getting option number B as the correct answer. So this was with question number 3. Now we'll move to question number 4.